All right, so in this lesson, I'd like us to work through a sample programming problem together so that we can utilize the debugging techniques introduced in the previous lessons, and I'll show you a few more tips and tricks that will make it really, really easy to write step-by-step -step incremental code. So here is a sample problem. Let's take a minute to read through it together. We want to define a function that iterates over a list of numbers, multiplies each number by one less than its index position and returns the total sum of those products. So whenever we have a problem like this, it's always good to write out a sample list of values that you plan to pass to the function and just walk through the iteration logic. I tend to do that in something like comments. It helps me get a sense of what it is that I'm trying to build out. So let's say I have a list of values and I'll populate it with one, two, three, or five. And then what I like to do is write a whole bunch of comments and just walk through that logic. So we know we want to iterate over each number in this list of numbers, and I want to multiply it by something. So I'm going to begin by writing out those values in my list, one, two, three, four, five. And then let's think about the logic. We want to multiply each number by one less than its index position. So let's go through each iteration. On my very first iteration, my value is one, my index is zero, but we want to multiply the number not by its index, but by one less than its index position. So it's going to be zero minus one, which is going to evaluate to negative one. So the total product here is going to be negative one. On my second iteration, my value is two. So the index is one. It is the second item in the list. The index is one. So one less than the index is one minus one, which is going to give me zero. So two times zero is going to be zero. Okay, it's starting to make sense here what I'm doing. On my third iteration, my element is three. My index is two. One less than the index is two minus one, which evaluates to one. So three times one is going to give me three. On my fourth iteration, it's going to be four times its index of three minus one. So three minus one is two. So four times two is going to give me eight. And then on the last iteration, it's going to be five times its index, which is four minus one, which is gonna give me three, and five times three evaluates to 15. And I'm gonna write this line here just to make it very pretty. And then, of course, I don't just wanna multiply each number by one less than its index position, I want to return the total sum of those products. So the sum of all of the values I have here on the right side of the equal sign. So if I add them together manually, negative one plus zero, that's negative one, plus three is two, plus eight is 10, plus 15 should give us a final return value of this function with this input of 25. Perfect. So now I have my basic logic planned out. I have a sense of what I want this function to return and I'm good to start writing it out. So I'll begin by declaring my function. I think I'll give this one the name multiply element by one less than index. Maybe not the perfect name, but I think it's all right for the purposes of this problem. Again, the goal here is not the perfect name. The goal is to practice debugging. So I want to provide this function a single parameter. It's going to be a sample list of numbers like values, which we have above, although it can be any list of numbers in the world. And before I start debugging, I want to write out the parts of the uh, the logic that I know for certain that I'm going to need. So I know at some point I'm going to need to calculate a cumulative sum. So what I can do is something like this. Let's say I have a variable called total and I'll start it off at zero. And then I know somewhere I'll need to do a iteration over my list of numbers that's passed in and I'll keep adding on something to total. And once I'm done with the iteration, I can return the value of total. All right, that part's kind of simple. It's, it's, it's hard to mess that up. So it's really not worth debugging. The hard part is gonna come, of course, in the actual iteration. So what do we need during this iteration? Well, we need the element and we also need its index position. We need its index position so that we can subtract one from it. So if we need to keep track of both the element and its index, we do need to use the built-in enumerate function. What am I gonna pass into enumerate? I'm gonna pass in whatever list it is that I wanna iterate over. In that case, that list comes in as an argument. It's going to be this numbers parameter right here. So whenever I use enumerate in the for loop, I provide two iterator variables. The first one represents the current index and the second one represents the current element that I'm iterating over. So I'm going to write for each index and number in enumerate. 
and put a colon here. So I'm gonna iterate over the index positions, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for this, and the numbers for a list like this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, we've covered this in the enumerate lesson uh, a little while ago. But what's really tricky is not the iteration, what's really tricky is what's going to go on here in the body. And let's say I don't wanna write this out yet because I'm uncertain. Now, unfortunately, we cannot leave a block body empty in Python. So what I do need to put here is a pass keyword, but that's totally fine because I can actually put a debugger right here, a breakpoint on line 18. So wherever I have my pass in the for loop iteration, I'm going to add a breakpoint right here. So by itself, if I were to run this file right now, we actually wouldn't pause because the declaration of a function doesn't actually um, cause the code to run. So in order to actually get the debugger or the breakpoint to stop here, we wanna make sure we run this function. So below, I'm going to print the return value of multiply element by one less than index, passing in a sample list of number such as values. All right, so the body of our function, the, the primary logic hasn't been written. But that's totally fine because we're, we're gonna use debugging to help us. I'm gonna show you a super cool feature in just a second. So let's go ahead and save this file, head to our a debugging window, which is right here, the run window with the uh, play button and the bug. And right here, we're selected to the current file and we're gonna press the run button and we're going to be paused at our very first breakpoint, which is on line number 18, all right? So by default, you're going to see the output right here in your terminal. But if you click around here, you're going to see an option. If you click this uh, three dots that you have wherever your output is in VS Code, you're going to see an option called Debug Console. So go ahead and click that, and that is going to bring you to an empty console right here. You can see there's a flashing cursor down below. This is actually a live console where we can execute code in the middle of our execution. Really powerful. For example, I can write valid Python code in here like one plus one. And you can see it's gonna give me the entry that I entered one plus one as well as its output of two. All right, you can almost think of this like the Python REPL except it's running in the middle of a program. So here on the left-hand side, you'll notice we're on the very first iteration. So we have the values of all of our local variables. We're on the first iteration, so our index is zero. The number that we're iterating over is number one, the very first element in our values list, and the total cumulative sum right now is zero. But if I didn't wanna use this, I can actually access those variables directly right here in my debug console. For example, I can take a look at what total is. I can just write total right here, press enter. We can see total is my input, and it's gonna tell me the current value of total is zero. Similarly, I can take my number, my number that I'm iterating over is one, and my index is zero. So now we can start to string together the calculation that we want to perform before we even write the code. So I can think to myself, okay, I need to start off with my number and I need to uh, multiply my number by what? Well, not just index, right? Because that would multiply it by its current index. I want to multiply it by index minus one. And I can double check that my logic is correct. So on my first iteration, when I execute this, we saw here in my sample comment, my number is one, my index is zero, one less than that is uh, negative one. So one times negative one should give me negative one. And I have the equivalent code written out right here and I can see it is giving me negative one, which gives me confidence that this code I have right here that I've practiced, that I've rehearsed in my debug console is what I actually want to move over to my actual implementation. So that's enough. What I can do is stop the debugging. I can press the red square and write the logic of, okay, I'm gonna take my current number being iterated over. I'm gonna multiply it by one less than the index. And the reason I'm wrapping this in parentheses, of course, is because I want the subtraction to occur before the multiplication. Otherwise, Python will multiply number times index and then subtract one from that product. I want this to take place first. Okay. Now, we know that we want to add this on to the cumulative total sum. But let's say I make a mistake. And that mistake is instead of adding on to the existing value of total, I'm just going to accidentally overwrite total. Okay, I'm gonna make a mistake. Happens all the time. And let's say I'm going to save this file, I'm gonna get rid of this debugger, and I'm gonna run this file now normally with something like Code Runner. 
And we can see it's going to give me 15 for this return value, even though I expect 25. So there's no error in our program in the sense that we're getting like a console crash or some kind of exception raised, but something is wrong with our logic. Well, for something like that, debugging is perfect. All we have to do is figure out where something can be going wrong, place a breakpoint at that juncture, and then just take a look at the program step by step. So what I'm gonna do is once again, place a breakpoint right here in line 18, just click here, make sure I'm in my debugging panel and press play. So what's really great now is because our breakpoint is in the middle of a for loop, we can actually press the continue button and it's just gonna to go to the next iteration of that loop, right? Because it's gonna repeat everything from the top of the for block as many times as we have elements in our numbers list, which means we're gonna pause on the logic each list on an each iteration. So once again, I can take a look at this and say, okay, here's my calculation. Let me switch back to my debug console right here. Let me double check if my logic is correct. My number times index minus one should give me negative one and I wanna make sure I overwrite total. So right now total is equal to zero on the very first iteration. So if I press my continue button, I'm gonna to go to the next iteration. We can see now these variables have changed. My index is one, second iteration. My number is two, second element in my list. And my total is equal to negative one. So everything is correct so far. We can't identify the bug yet, right? Because on the first iteration, overriding total is totally fine. It is negative one at this point. But the beautiful part about debugging is again, we can walk through it step by step. So right now we can repeat the same logic. We can say, okay, my index is one. So I'm gonna say index minus one, my number is two. So number times index minus one in my debug console, that should give me zero, that is correct. And if I'm cumulatively adding negative one plus zero, I should expect total to be negative one on the next iteration when I start the for loop again. But now you'll see when I start the beginning of the next iteration, instead of negative one, my total is unfortunately equal to zero. And I can think to myself, okay, something is wrong here, but maybe I can't tell what it is. Let me try another example. Once again, the debug console is really helpful. You can see the values of the local variables here. You can print them out if you need to and then do the calculations again. So you can even use the up arrow key to navigate to your previous commands. So here I have the same command we've executed. We can now execute it on this iteration to see my number is three times one less than the index of two is three times one, which should give me three. We're getting the exact value we expect. So now when I add three to my cumulative sum of negative one plus zero, I should expect to get two at the start of the next iteration for my total variable, but instead my total variable is equal to three. Okay, so now I'm seeing the pattern here that my total variable at the start of the next iteration is, is equal to the product of the number times index minus one, but not the cumulative sum because I'm accidentally overriding total each iteration with the latest calculation. So the reason we're going to be getting 15 at the end of all of this is because 15 is the final calculation. If I could get rid of this breakpoint and run this following code runner, we're getting, let's see here, we have some kind of bug. We're getting 15 here because 15 is the last calculation of five times three five times one less than the index position of four gives us 15. We overwrite total to be 15, which of course returns 15 instead of the cumulative sum. And once I can identify that bug, of course, that is a logical step. It requires you to debug and get a sense of where the calculation is wrong. I can see, ah, okay, I'm overriding total with my new calculation instead of adding on top of it, instead of adding my current calculation on top of the cumulative sum. All right, so now you can, fix this code, and what we can do even is add another debugger or another breakpoint, navigate through these iterations one continue at a time, and double check the total is correct for the first couple of iterations, and that will validate that our logic is correct. And once we're comfortable, of course, then we can run the program as a whole and see that now we're providing or producing the correct return value of 25, right? So even if there's no bugs, you're more than welcome to use the breakpoints to debug your program just one line at a time, one iteration at a time. Make sure that everything is working as expected and use the helpful debug console to run whatever calculations you want, to check the value of whatever variable you want, to write any Python code at all that you'd like, etc.
So this entire suite of tools is really powerful because you don't have to write all of your logic up front. You don't just have to use your print function calls to see the current values of variables. You can actually pause the program at a given moment of execution and let the editor let its helpful outputs right here on the left as well as the outputs you enter in the debug console on the right. They can help guide you towards a working implementation. So hopefully this has been really helpful and hopefully you can apply these concepts to all the lessons moving forward in the course as well as all the coding challenges. If you're ever confused or if anything is ever broken, slow down, put a breakpoint, work through the lines of code one at a time. Don't be afraid to write out your variables. Don't be afraid to print them out, right? All of this is just us practicing debugging and fixing our bugs and use this powerful feature to help you analyze what's going right and what's going wrong with your code. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson.